Welcome to this video about service of the Danfoss ICM 100 to 150 motor operated valves. In this video, we will give you some tips how to do an efficient service of the ICM 100 to 150 motor operated valves, which you see an example of here, to ensure safe and reliable valve operation and minimum service costs. Therefore, we will show you how to replace the ICAT actuator if needed, how to pressure equalize the valve internally before service how to isolate the valve from the system and drain it before service. We will also show you how to replace the fiber gasket if needed, how to replace the function module if needed, how to replace the O-rings on the function module if needed. Finally, we will show you how to replace the pilot piston if needed, how to replace the PTFE valve plate on the servo piston if needed, and finally, how to recharge the valve and connect it to the system. The complete ICM 100 to 150 motor operated valves consist of valve body with function module and ICAT actuator, as seen here. This valve range includes valve sizes 100, 125, 150, and the valves come with various types of connections. In this video, we demonstrate the service of the ICM 100 valve, but the service procedure is the same for all valve sizes and variants. The service of the valve is done with the valve located on a table as seen here, but the procedures of valve disassembly, valve pass replacement, and valve reassembly are the same for the valve located in a reformation system. Here you see the tools needed for the service of the ICM 100-150 motor operated valves. This includes multifunction tool with the specified code number, torque wrench, pipe wrench, allen key, screwdrivers. So let us get started with the valve service. To remove the ICAT actuator from the valve, first remove the electrical cables from the ICAT according to the instructions given in the ICAT installation guide. Then loosen the locking screws so that they are not in contact with the valve top. Finally, carefully remove the ICAT actuator from the valve. Do not rotate or remove the ICAT actuator if the locking screws are not loosened. In some cases, the valve might be internally pressurized by refrigerant both upstream and downstream the valve. This internal refrigerant pressure can be equalized by manually opening the valve using the multifunction tool seen here. Therefore, carefully mount the tool onto the valve top. Then carefully rotate the tool clockwise to open the valve. Keep rotating the tool until it clicks over, which means that the valve is fully open. Then remove the tool from the valve top. The valve is now ready to be isolated from the system, drained and depressurized from refrigerant before further service. Before servicing the ICM 100 to 150 motor operator valves, it is very important to do the following steps. Isolate the valve from the system, drain refrigerant from the valve, check and ensure that there is no refrigerant pressure before disassembly of the valve. To remove the top cover, firstly loosen the bolts. Remove most of the bolts, leaving two bolts partly fixed to the valve body as a safety measure, should there by accident still be refrigerant pressure inside the valve. Insert one or two screwdrivers between the top cover and the valve body and tilt the screwdrivers to loosen the top cover from the valve body. Once ensured that there is no refrigerant pressure inside the valve, then remove the remaining two bolts. Finally, carefully lift and remove the top cover. Carefully remove the fiber gasket by hand from the valve body and replace the gasket if needed. Do not use a sharp tool to remove the fiber gasket since this might damage the gasket groove. To remove the function module from the valve body, do the following. Firstly, remove the washer from the top of the function module. Then insert two screwdrivers in the machine groove on the outside of the function module. Tilt the screwdrivers to loosen the function module and its O-rings from the valve body. Carefully lift and remove the function module. Be careful not to scratch or damage the function module during removal. Carefully remove the O-rings by hand from the function module and replace the O-rings if needed. Do not use a sharp tool to remove the O-rings since this might damage the O-ring grooves. To remove the piston assembly from the function module, do the following. Rotate the spindle counterclockwise a few times to lift the bearing house from the function module. 
Then carefully pull the bearing house upwards to remove the piston assembly from the function module. Be careful not to scratch or damage the function module and piston assembly during removal. To disassemble the piston assembly, do the following. Rotate the spindle and bearing house counterclockwise to remove it from the piston assembly. Then carefully push downwards on the pilot piston while rotating it counterclockwise with a suitable tool to remove it from the servo piston. Remove the spring from the servo piston. Replace the pilot piston if needed. Be careful not to scratch or damage the pilot piston and servo piston during disassembly. If the PTFE valve plate needs to be replaced, then rotate the washer plate counterclockwise to loosen and remove the washer plate from the servo piston. Carefully remove the PTFE valve plate from the servo piston and replace it. Then reassemble the servo piston. Be careful not to damage the sealing surface of the servo piston. You can use different available service kits to replace one valve parts during reassembly of the ITM 100-150 motor operator valves. Here you see the available service kits for ITM 100-150 valves. These are inspection kit, which includes O-rings for the function module and fiber gasket for the valve body. Repair kit, which includes O-rings for the function module, fiber gasket for the valve body, PTFE valve plate and pilot piston for the servo piston. Overall kit, which includes fiber gasket for valve body, pilot piston for servo piston, and complete function module, including O-rings and PTFE valve plate. And ICAT service kit, which includes O-ring, PTFE ring, grease kit, locking screws, and an Allen key for the locking screws. Please look for spare parts details for the different ICM valve sizes in the spare parts catalog, which is available on danvers.com. So let us start the valve assembly using spare parts from these service kits. To assemble the piston assembly, do the following. Mount the spring inside the servo piston. Push the pilot piston into the servo piston by rotating it clockwise with a suitable tool until it is fully fixed in the servo piston. Ensure that the holes in the piston are aligned so that the bearing house can be located correctly. Mount the spindle and bearing house into the piston assembly and rotate them clockwise until they are fixed in the piston assembly. Please note that for a piston with cast iron knot, which is standard from week 49, 2021, then lubricate the spindle with refrigerant oil or grease before mounting it. For a piston with peak knot, which was standard until week 49, 2021, do not lubricate the spindle. Be careful not to scratch or damage the pilot piston and servo piston during assembly. To mount the piston assembly into the function model, do the following. Carefully push the bearing house downwards to mount the piston assembly into the function model. If needed, then rotate the spindle clockwise a few times to lower the bearing house and fix it into the function model. Be careful not to scratch or damage the function model and piston assembly during assembly. Before mounting the O-rings, firstly clean the O-ring grooves in the function module. Lubricate the O-rings with refrigerant oil so that they are not damaged during mounting. Then carefully mount the O-rings. Carefully mount the function module into the valve body. Press by hand the function module fully into place. Mount the washer on top of the function module. Ensure that the washer is placed correctly with the inclined surface pointing upwards. Be careful not to scratch or damage the function module during mounting. Before mounting the fiber gasket, make sure that the surfaces where the gasket is located are clean and free from scratches. You do not need to lubricate the fiber gasket before mounting it. Then carefully mount the gasket. Carefully mount the top cover onto the valve body so that the groove of the spindle yoke fits to the spindle top. Then locate the top cover in any rotational direction as needed and press until full contact between top cover and valve body. Mount the bolts and cross tighten them with the specified torque. To facilitate later mounting and calibrating of the iCAT actuator, do the following. Mount the multifunction tool seen here 
onto the valve top and rotate it slightly counterclockwise so that the function module is not fully open. Then remove the tool from the valve top. Before mounting the iCAT actuator, firstly do the following. Remove the existing O-ring and PTFE ring from the valve top by hand. Ensure that old grease on the valve top, including in O-ring and PTFE ring grooves, is fully removed before mounting a new O-ring and PTFE ring. If there's any ice or moisture present on the valve top, then it must be removed before applying new grease. Such ice or moisture can be removed with an electrical hot air gun. After ice or moisture removal by heater, ensure that the valve top is totally dry before mounting new O-ring, new PTFE ring and applying new grease. Then carefully mount the new PTFE ring onto the valve top. Apply Molycoat 55 grease onto the O-ring and carefully mount the O-ring into the O-ring groove on the valve top. Apply Molycoat 55 grease into the valve top groove below the O-ring and ensure that it is distributed all around the valve top. Clean the iCAT inner magnets. Then apply a very thin layer of Molycoat 55 grease around and on the iCAT magnets. If there is any ice or moisture present inside the iCAT, then it must be removed before applying new grease and mounting the iCAT. Again, ice or moisture can be removed with an electrical hot air gun. Rotate the locking screws clockwise by approximately three rotations and then rotate them counterclockwise to their original positions. Please note that new O-ring, PTFE ring and Molycoat 55 grease are supplied with the iCAT actuator. Check the iCAT installation guide on danfoss.com. Carefully mount the iCAT actuator onto the valve top and press it downwards until there is full contact with the top cover. Please note that you can position the iCAT in any rotational direction as needed. Then tighten the locking screws on the iCAT actuator with the specified torque. Do not move or rotate the iCAT once the locking screws are tightened. After completing the assembly of the ICM 100-150 motor operated valves, ensure to do the following steps. Connect the valve to the system. Evacuate and charge refrigerant to system and valve. Check and ensure that the refrigerant pressure is equalized in the valve and system. Finally, Connect electrical cables to the iCAT actuator and perform a functional test of the ICM valve and iCAT actuator according to the instructions given in the ICM and iCAT installation guides. You have now completed service of the ICM 100-150 motor operated valves. So now you know how to replace the iCAT actuator if needed. Press equalize the valve internally before service. Isolate the valve from the system and drain it before service. Replace the fiber gasket if needed. Replace the function module if needed. Replace the O-rings on the function module if needed. Replace the pilot piston if needed. Replace the PTFE valve plate on the servo piston if needed. And finally, how to recharge the valve and connect it to the system. All this ensuring a safe and reliable valve operation with minimum service costs. Have a look at the other online learnings about Danfoss valves. Thanks for watching.